Rate yourself from 1 to 100 how vigilant you'll be at avoiding bringing GM foods into your home. 1 to 20. 20 to 40. 40 to 60. 60 to 80. 80 to 100. Now, you may have noticed a change here. This change is consistent. When I speak to medical doctors, food service directors, farmers, foodies, parents, it is easy. It is easy to make changes in people's lifelong eating habits on the spot, which makes the elimination of GMOs so easy. You don't have to become a GMO expert and stand in front of a group and speak because I've got this recorded. <laughs> and I've got this in all these different variety of ways for the left brainer, the right brainer, the visual thinker, the audio person, the person with the iPod. But we do need the network. So how active do you plan to be on helping to stop this? How do we stop it? Let's compare where we are today with the plans by Monsanto. <laughs> In a San Francisco biotech conference, not far from here, in January of 1999, Monsanto's consultant, Arthur Anderson Consulting, they were also Enron's consultant, birds of a feather. They described how they worked with Monsanto to develop their plans for GMOs. They asked the executives to describe their ideal future in 15 to 20 years. The Monsanto executives described a world in which 100% of all commercial seeds in the world were genetically engineered and patented. And Anderson Consulting worked backwards from that goal to create the strategy and tactics to achieve it. A few speakers later, another biotech representative projected a 95% takeover of all commercial seeds within five years. By 2004. But within three weeks, their ideal future crashed. And here is where I will share with you the first page of Seeds of Deception. And you're going to have to buy it to get the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson from overseas. When Susan answered the door, she was startled to see several reporters standing in front of her. More were running from their cars in her direction, and she could see other cars and TV news vans parking along her street. But you all know we can't speak about what happened. We would be sued. It's OK now, the reporter from Channel 4 Television interrupted, waving a paper in front of her. They've released your husband. He can talk to us. Susan took the paper. Arpad, come here, she called to her husband. Arpad Pustai, a distinguished-looking man in his late 60s, was already on his way. As his wife showed him the document, the reporter slipped past them into the house. But Arpad didn't notice. He was staring at the paper his wife had just handed him. He recognized the letterhead at once, the Rowett Institute, Aberdeen, Scotland. It was one of the world's leading nutritional institutes and his employer for the previous 35 years, until his sudden suspension seven months ago. And there it was, clearly spelled out, they had released their gag order. He could speak. The document was dated that same day, February 16, 1999. In fact, less than 20 minutes before, 30 reporters had sat in the Rowett press conference, listening to its director, Professor Philip James, casually mention that the restriction on Dr. Pustai's speaking to the press had been lifted. Before James had finished his sentence, the reporters leaped for the door. <laughs> they jumped into their cars and headed straight to the Pustai's house on Ashley Park North, an address most, most were familiar with, having virtually camped out there seven months earlier. Now those 30 reporters with TV cameras and tape recorders were piled into the Pustai's living room. Arpad Pustai read the document twice, as he looked up, the reporter started asking him questions all at once. He smiled and breathed more easily than he had in a long time. He had all but given up hope. Now he finally had the chance to share what he knew 
about the dangers of genetically engineered foods. Within one week, 159 column feet of articles were written. Within a month, 750 articles. By April of 1999, using GMOs had become a marketing liability. The tipping point was achieved. Starting with Unilever, Britain's largest food manufacturer, they publicly committed to no longer use GM ingredients in their European brands. Within about three days, so did everyone else. That has limited the expansion of GMOs, not to 95% of all commercial seeds, but largely to four major crops with two major traits in six countries and in 2.4% of the agricultural land. We need to create the tipping point in the United States to make GMOs a marketing liability. Now, we can wait for the general population to get it. We can ask Oprah Winfrey, she could do it in 60 minutes. <laughs> and I'm trying. <laughs> but we don't need to convince the average junk-eating couch potato person in the United States to change their diet and to consider for the first time that food might have an effect. <laughs> we have four groups in the United States that are receptive to this knowledge, that would take this information and act on it, and each one of those four groups are large enough to create the tipping point all by themselves. We have health conscious shoppers. 28 million Americans buy organic food regularly, 54 million Americans less regularly. Now, already, more than half say they would avoid eating GMOs. More than half the general population say they would eat, avoid eating GMOs if given a choice. Health conscious shoppers, it's overwhelming. So we know where they go to school, we know where they eat, we know what they read. So we have commitments from magazines to run, our two, run as a two-page spread version of our shopping guide in their magazines for free. We have major websites. We have listservs with millions of people ready to send out our shopping guide in the next few weeks. We are going to give health conscious shoppers what they have wanted for 12 years, clear non-GMO choices. And on top of that, the good news is the entire natural food industry is finally getting behind a new non-GMO standard, just like an organic standard. This is a third party verified non-GMO standard. And on the board of that standard are the leaders of the natural food industry, Whole Foods, United Natural Foods, Nature's Path, Organic Valley, uh, uh, White Wave, uh, Lundberg Family Farms. And they're converting their products to verified non-GMO, and the seals and the, the verification seals will be issued in a year. So we are, yes, let's give applause there.